Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Today is July the 24th and uh, we are happy that we are, we've been able to make it to this point in our lives. So you have every reason to thank God. Today we're going to be looking at some issues as usual. CBN raises interest rate to 26.75% amid inflation. And then we're also going to look at some universities uh, may admit 10 years old, according to JAMP Registrar. Okay, those are our top trend, those are our hot topics that we are going to be taking this morning. We also are going to have top trending issues uh, that uh, caught our fancy in the last 24 hours. And then we will be looking at uh, the newspapers to see what headlines uh, they are in our national dailies. What are they, those uh, stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies or some of our national dailies? We'll find out on uh, the, the of the press uh, segment of the program as we call it. First of all, let's take the quote of the day. Today is your day to start fresh, to eat right, to train hard, to live healthy, to be proud. Today is your day to start fresh, to eat right, to train hard, to live healthy, to be proud. That's according to Bonnie Feister. A wonderful day, wonderful quote there. Today is uh, the beginning of the rest of your life, so you make the best of it. That is simply what it is. No matter what happened yesterday, no matter what is going to happen today, today is your, no matter what is going to happen tomorrow rather, today is your most important day in life. Not the day you were born, not the day you are going to die, not the day you achieved anything else in your life, uh, but today is the present. And the present is another name for a gift. You've been given a gift to start afresh, to make everything right in your life or solidify whatever right you have been doing all your life. So you have today to leave don't worry about what happened yesterday or don't even rejoice about what happened yesterday uh, don't think about what is going to happen tomorrow because even the good book says uh, why worry about tomorrow when you have today so you have today to live your life start afresh do everything that you're you're supposed to do and above all try to make yourself happy healthy and knowing that it's an opportunity to start afresh so we hope that whoever is there now watching us has made that commitment to make today the best of his and his or her entire life that's what it is if you make the best of today tomorrow will take care of itself yesterday will just be put in its own place and that's the end of the story so let's go uh, uh, very quickly now to our top trending issues uh, this morning the senate and house of representatives swiftly passed the national minimum wage act 2019 amendment bill the bill, which went through second and third reading in both legislative chambers of the National Assembly within minutes of being transmitted by President Bola Tinubu, was approved separately by the Senate and the House of Representatives on Tuesday. Following a unanimous vote after a clause-by-clause -clause consideration in the Committee of the Whole, the National Minimum Wage Bill passed its third reading and was approved by the Senate. The House of Representatives also passed the bill immediately mirroring the Senate's actions. President Tinubu is expected to sign the bill into law. Earlier, the bill transmitted to the national minimum, uh, transmitted the national minimum wage bill to the National Assembly for consideration and passage. He separately wrote to the Senate and the House of Representatives requesting prompt consideration of the bill to amend the National Minimum Wage Act 2019, increasing the national minimum wage from 30 thousand naira to 70,000 naira. Additionally, the president requested lawmakers to reduce the period of periodic review of the national minimum wage from five years to three years, addressing related matters in the process. I kind of liked uh, the fact that uh, the, the Senate and the House of Representatives ensured the National Assembly was swift about this. But my hope is that uh, this will put to rest all the issues about minimum wage. We do hope that all the states will be uh, disciplined enough to pay the national minimum wage of 70,000 naira. I hear that some states have even offered to pay 80,000, that is 10,000 above what uh, uh, the, uh, the National Assembly has just passed into law as at yesterday. Uh, before now, 
uh, Edo was the one who set the pace and said that they were going to pay their workers 70,000 Naira. I'm sure that also played a significant role in the decision of the, uh, of the tripartite committee and the labor to arrive at a figure that uh, was going to be paid to all workers everywhere in Nigeria. We've always been talking about federating, federating units of Nigeria and if they cannot pay because they are tied to the apron strings of uh, the federal government, we should be thinking seriously about uh, federalism, true federalism, which uh, the present administration was crying that we need in Nigeria before they came into power. So if we were talking about separation of powers, we're talking about uh, true federalism where states will uh, be required to manage whatever they have in that state and just pay uh, a percentage to the federal government, then so be it. Let's see uh, what states will collapse themselves into <clears throat> one another. Every, every geopolitical zone right now is clamoring for a, straight, a state. It's not just uh, enough to have a state. Uh, what we're sh supposed to be looking at is how viable will a state be. For instance, the entire southeastern uh, geopolitical zone has about five states. Uh, well, they are saying that it is the smallest in number of uh, states. They have five, while others have uh, six states and so on. They want another state because it will bring more development to the people and all that. But the entire southeast is uh, almost as big as only uh, or your state or, or some of the states in Nigeria are bigger than the entire Southeast put together. Uh, still, one would expect that with that small number of, of, of people or, or landmass, small geographical location that they are having with five states, there should, there should be development more than everywhere else in, in Nigeria, but that is not the case. I'm not saying that the southeastern governors are not trying, but I'm saying that um, creating states uh, may not be the solution to the developmental problems that we have in Nigeria right now. We need good leaders that will take care of uh, the needs of the people and not be thinking about white elephant projects that uh, we may not even need in whatever state that we find ourselves. And we also need leaders that will be creative enough to make sure uh, that uh, we get the required IGR to, uh, to finance the state as it were. There are countries in this world that do not have the endowments that Nigeria has, for instance, and they are doing better than Nigeria. There are some countries that all they do is technology, there are some countries that sell some other things that are not gold, they are not oil, they are not the kind of things that we have in Nigeria, yet they are thriving. So it is thinking out of the box and sometimes thinking as if they were not box at all. That is what brings a nation to where they should be. And we should start thinking like that in Nigeria. And we should have leaders that are upright enough to tell the truth to themselves and to the people that they govern. Well, um, we're hoping for a better Nigeria, that's, that's what it is, and so uh, whatever it is that we're praying for, let's just have it. Minimum wage, 70,000 Naira. We hope that all the governors will be able to pay, and we hope that because of the 70,000 Naira minimum wage, the inflation will not even go even worse. Now that the MPC is talking about tightening uh, the belts on uh, borrowing so that the inflation will go down. I don't know how that works. It doesn't seem to be working for the common man. I don't understand. A lot of people do not understand. But hey, the experts say that's the way to go. So, well, very good. We're hoping that uh, inflation will come down. Let 70,000 Naira be a, a, a breath of fresh air rather than what will cause us to even go further into despair. Uh, crime rates drop uh, nationwide, that is according to the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Bektokun, who reported a decline in crime rates with major crimes dropping to 416 in the last month from 734 in May and 530 in June, attributing this to the strategies deployed by the police. During a meeting with commissioners of police in Abuja, Igbeto Kung praised the officers for their dedication and commitment, which have contributed to the stability of the country's internal security. In the past month, the police arrested 1,284 individuals, recovered 284 firearms, 6,702 rounds of ammunition, 107 vehicles, and rescued 97 kidnapped victims. 
The IG highlighted efforts to combat oil theft, including reorganizing the IGP Special Task Force on Petroleum, which recently intercepted stolen goods and arrested suspects with cases already in court for under or under investigation. The better could emphasize that these achievements were possible due to the cooperation of the public and other security agencies, showcasing the professionalism and dedication of the police force. We thank the police, but I think um, it is too early to clap for themselves and beat their chest and say all is well. Uh, what if these bandits and whoever it is are just re-strategizing? We should keep a low profile and not beat our drums all the time. That, that's my, my own take. If, um, if the people who are arrested are above 500 and then the previous month it was like, uh, okay, the, the crime rate, um, the cases were 700 and something, and that means it has dropped about 200 and then we are clapping for ourselves just a month's interval interval i think it's it's too it's too early we're hoping that it stays that way and even goes further uh, so that we don't have any cases or when we have it should be below 100 um, uh, cases but um it's quite early but uh, i i'm glad that the igp is acknowledging the the contribution of the ordinary person who is who may not be a security operative the cooperation of the people in what they are doing we the people also are begging the police and all other security uh, agencies to respect the people and believe in the people and also protect the people sometimes people will have credible information but they are afraid that when they bring this information to the police, they might be uh, the people who, are, who, who will be taken into custody because the police may not um, be able to investigate these issues. For instance, if I'm going on the road and there's been an accident and I'm, taking, I'm trying to take the person to a hospital, we know a lot of people who have entered into trouble, as it were. How did you see this person who had this accident? Uh, in case the person dies, that's the worst part. You could go in for it and all that. Those are the kind of things that people fear and they don't volunteer information. You have overheard a conversation, people are planning to rob and you tell the police, how did you know? What, how did you come close to these people? And then when they don't get the armed robbers, you are the one that will go in for it. These are things, we're, we're not just spreading uh, fear among the people. These are things that people have experienced. You, you escort your friend who has been invited to the police station to see what becomes of the case and then you also are thrown into the cell with your friend. Uh, things have happened, a lot of things have happened. Sometimes the first person to report may be the, the, the criminal himself, but because he's the first person to report and he was able to fund the investigation, so to speak, uh, the, whoever else has been reported goes in for it and then there's no investigation. We know a lot of people who are awaiting trial in prisons. We know a lot of them who, who are not supposed to be there and the prisons are clocked by people who have been framed in one way or the other uh, because the police refuse to do their job. So if you acknowledge the importance of people, you have to respect the people, you have to protect the people, you have to up your game of investigation so that people who volunteer information don't become the victims of whatever information that they are giving to you. It's just a word from an ordinary man like me to the uh, police. Now, Katsina government introduces Ida law for widows. This is an interesting one. The Katsina state government has introduced an Islamic Ida period law uh, allowing female civil servants to take four months and 10 days of mourning leave if they lose their husbands. This new law follows a motion passed by the state house of assembly and approved by the executive. Katsina state head of civil service Falula, uh, Falalu uh, Bawale announced the law stating that a secular has been issued to all state ministries, departments and agencies to grant this leave to female officers. The law aims to enable women to observe the traditional Islamic mourning period for their deceased husbands. Bawale mentioned that the issue was presented to the National Council on Establishment, which allowed states the liberty to create rules that suit their purposes, leading to the implementation of this law in Katsina. Well, it's a, it's a very, very, well, I like it, I like it. I'm just asking, so if a man loses a woman, um, loses a wife, he doesn't have the capacity to feel. Uh, he shouldn't have this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, leave as well. 
I, I think a lot of things that are done for the women should be done for the men as well. I'm not saying um, this is um, discrimination or all that, but I'm saying that if you think a woman can feel, a man can feel as well. In fact, when a man loses a, a wife, he's more destabilized than a woman. I'm, I'm not talking about the cultural issues that are involved in some places. Your, your in-laws are driving you away from your husband's house and all that. Yes, I, 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 I know all those things. But a woman is more organized and a man is just um, going out there looking for bread to put on the table for the family and all that. And when the wife who stabilizes the home, the wife who is the homemaker uh, is gone, it takes a man more time to even settle down, to know what to do with the children, what to do with the house, what to do with everything concerning that household that they have been to. And no matter that some people will just bury themselves in a bottle of beer or some people bury themselves in smoking or doing other things to forget about it, the heartbreak is the same. So we already have maternity leave for the women. We don't have paternity leave for men in a lot of places. We, we now are talking about either, yes, it's an Islamic provision, but even if it's an Islamic provision or a religious provision, we should also think about the hearts of men who need a break to process what they have gone through. I'm just saying. So it's good, a very good thing. Do it for the women. But I'm asking also at least for a little time to do for the men because they also need to, to take this time. Some of them will need therapy. Some of them will just need to be with other loved ones that they know uh, will, will comfort them. Some of them need to do a lot of things to reorganize themselves and um, come to terms with the fact that the homemaker, the organizer of the home, is no longer there. Uh, well, thank you. Congratulations to the Katsina state government. I hope other state governments will also borrow a leave and make sure these people heal somewhat before they return to work. But also there should be a clause for the person who has been given this leave to choose to be on this leave or not to be on this leave. It shouldn't be compulsory. If you choose to be, fine. Because some people uh, find healing in numbers. Staying at home at that time may be worse than you know coming to work and meeting friends and talking and all that. So let the people elect to go or not to go. You have that free will to go. Just like ordinary leave, that some people who don't go for leave all their lives while they're working, they have their reasons and all that. But um, let the people be able to choose whether to go or not to go or when to go. Some people, before the, 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 the whatever has happened hits them, it will take more time. So you're giving me leave now, but when the reality hits me, it's going to be maybe a year from when I really lost my husband and all that. So let them choose when to go and if they want to go in the first place. And that's what I think anyway. I don't know if the psychologists will agree with me, but some people process loss uh, differently and the timelines are not the same. So you're giving me leave now to go and process it, to go and heal. Meanwhile, it has not even hit home and it will hit home maybe six months from then or one year from then and then I don't have the opportunity to go again. I'm just saying. Well, we'll take a break now. That's, uh, that's that for Top Trending. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Don't go away.